Marketing 101. So, what is a product? Firstly, a product is a concrete or abstract object that pleases the needs and desires of the consumer. The product can't be considered only as belongings and services, but can be considered also as brands and packages. So, these products can be sold to consumers, which is the most normal, that we call B2C, or to organizations, which we call B2B. Companies need to introduce new products continuously to stop other aggressive companies to get their clients. International licensed contracts and the franchises can spread products all over the world through a series of small and medium companies. A good example of it is Coke. We have a lot of different things. We have lipstick, we have chairs, we have flip-flops, stickers, we have t-shirts, blouses, and even bags. So this makes the consumers have much more choices of options and every day there's a new product making them buy more and more every day. A producer not being able to move fast enough on the business world can be seriously damaged by this process. Services are also a kind of products. Services are products that we call uh, products in activity and we have some characteristics of it. After all the steps to make the product we have to classify it, classify them. So what am I doing? I'm doing a product that can be sold to different people or to a specific group of people. I'm doing a product that has a durability time higher than the other one or not. Am, am I doing a product that can be used only once or not? These things are very important for, the, for us to know so we can classify the products because uh, through its characteristics, it is easier to classify them. So the first thing to know about the products is to put them into three groups according to their their durability and tangibility. So the first one is the not durable goods. These are normally consumed or used once or a few times. We have some examples like soap, beer, um, toothpaste are things that we need to buy frequently because we use them and they end, they are over or they, they end. And we need to keep buying them. These products are consumed fast and bought frequently. The appropriate, appropriate strategy to do it is to make them available in many places and have little profit in retail. So we make the advertisements to induce the trial and earn the preference of the consumer so he or she can buy our product again with our company and not go to another one. The second group is the durable goods. So they are normally used through a period of time and we buy it less frequently. So we have some examples as gloves, uh, tools, refrigerators, and they normally require personal services and services sales to work with a bigger profit and insurance given by the manufacturer. This is a good example because if I'm going to buy something a little more expensive like a refrigerator, I'm going to prefer the one that the manufacturer gives me the insurance. So if, I, if it happens that I buy it, and the product has some 
uh, issues, I can change it or send it to the repairment. This is very important in this process for the client. Uh, the third and last group is the services. Now we are talking about the non-tangible product. The inseparable, variable and perishable. So as a result, they normally require a higher quality control. Some examples of these are hair salons, repairment services, as I said about the refrigerator, and um, everything that requires a service. I'm not buying a product, I'm buying a service. So we have mechanic that we don't buy a car or a tool. We buy the repairment of our car. After having our product, we are going to classify it into buying habits of the consumer. So the consumer have, has a lot of buying habits and the products are very easy to be classified as it. The first habit is the convenience. Convenience is the product classified as frequently bought. So they usually have low prices and they are high availed. The consumer doesn't spend time buying it. Some examples are soda, parking lots and matches. They can be classified into three more other categories. So we have the basic that are bought regularly, like toothpaste. We have the compulsory buys that are those products that are next to the cashier, like bubble gum or chocolate. We are not searching for it and we didn't plan to buy it, but we still do it anyway. And the last one is the emergency products, is the, the ones we will only remember when we need it, in urgent times, in urgent needs. So uh, examples are umbrella during a storm or a flashlight during a blackout. Then we have the comparison products. They are less frequently bought and compared according to their quality, prices, style and some other examples. In this case, the client spends more time looking for the best product and usually goes for the brand they are used to buy it. Some examples are uh, the dentist or the furniture. If you have, for example, a laptop from Dell, you're not going to buy another laptop from another brand because you know that Dell is a good brand and is worth it. So we have a lot of compar comparisons, but usually we compare to the brand. It doesn't matter the other comparisons. We go to the brand that we trust. Of course, we have the specialty products that are the ones that are expensive and where the principal characteristics of, it, of them are the brand and the notable price. So those are the products where people see it and they know that are expensive. We have some examples as the properties, vehicles and jewelry. The not searched products, it's the ones that the consumer usually doesn't know or doesn't think about buying it until they are offered for them. Some examples are life insurance and smoke detectors. We have corporative products also. They are classified by their production process and their relative costs. We can divide corporative products into five other different types, but this is subject for another video. Today we are staying here and I hope you guys enjoy it. See you next video. Bye. We have now the five steps of the development.